photographs, textiles, ceramics, wood and metal objects, artwork and frames, and is the owner of the Conservation Clinic, a restoration studio based in downtown Peterborough. Aside from working on countless individual projects, Basha has also been contracted by such organizations as the City of Toronto Archives, Peterborough and District Sports Hall of Fame, Peterborough Museum and Archives, the Art Gallery of Peterborough, Hutchison House Museum, and many more. She has been the conservator for Lang Pioneer Village for 12 years. Basha has taught paper and textile conservation at Algonquin College in Ottawa, and has developed hands-on courses and workshops, which she currently teaches in her studio in downtown Peterborough. Please help me give a warm welcome to Basha Vasinski. speak in a kind of a normal speaking voice and if you can't hear me just give me a shout and I'll put on the headset thing there. <laughs> um, a lot of our... It would be better well, if Well, I think I'm going to be kind of walking back and forth. It would be forward. better if you use the mic for the number of people would here it? who have hearing problems. But it's portable if you want to yeah. take it off. Yeah. Just pull it out. Pull it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of the photographs that you're going to be seeing in this show, I have on the side table here. So uh, at any time uh, during the presentation or after the presentation, if you want to come and take a look, um, it'll just reinforce what I've been saying here. And I guess we should turn some lights off. Lights. Lights. Right. 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 Is that good? Yes. All right. So preserving and protecting paper and photos. We're just going to focus on paper-based artifacts. This presentation will give you an idea of how paper and photographs deteriorate, the factors that destroy them, and what we can do to protect our documents. The life of every person is documented in some way. We tend to accumulate important things, such as wills, certificates for birth, marriages, and deaths, educational awards and other achievements, property deeds, maps and plans, diaries and correspondence, genealogies, scrapbooks and journals, photograph albums, cuttings, notices, and other ephemera. And if you're like me, you probably have several of each of those. And here's just a collection, a random collection of some family documents. Even as children, we often store our treasures in obscure boxes or out-of-the-way drawers so that we can stand guard over their safety. As adults and as we continue to get older, we think of our documents, papers, and photos as the glue that holds together our personal history. Sometimes, when we return to these boxes and drawers, we discover that time has taken its toll and this can be devastating like that and these documents are on the side there you can take a look at them actually if you do take a look they're in uh, uh, plastic sleeves but feel free to just put your hand in and, and feel it's it, they feel like the softest velvet that you could ever feel they're almost totally destroyed <laughs> but but they're they're very luscious as they do that <laughs> there's no mold <laughs> So the main factors of deterioration are pests, light, high humidity, fluctuating temperatures and humidity, the environment, and us, poor handling and poor storage. Pests eat, chew, and tunnel their way through books, boxes, and documents. They thrive on the glues, the starches, uh, the fibers of paper, and can have a devastating effect on your collection. 
And to make matters worse, they also leave behind droppings in urine that stain surfaces and even dissolve fibers. You know this, Ruth. <laughs> so here's a, this, I think this is a fire brat, actually. Silverfish and fire brats are cousins. Um, the silverfish is a little more streamlined and doesn't quite have as many plates as that. And here's a book damaged likely by fire brats um, and other things. And I have a book that's from Lang Pioneer Village on the side here that's very, the, the destruction on it looks very similar to this. <coughs> cigarette and drugstore beetles. And honestly, I don't know why they're called that. The cigarette beetles because they invade cigarettes, but the drugstore beetles, um, don't know, they eat paper. <laughs> <coughs> and this is what they do. Drugstore beetle larvae burrow through books, creating a hole in each page. It's like a tunnel. And there's a tiny little book louse. <laughs> He's not squashed. That's how big they actually are. They're just tiny. But this is what they do. <laughs> And cockroaches, who knew that cockroaches ate paper? They do, yeah, well, they eat everything, including paper. And <laughs> this is what they do. Nice, big, fat holes. <laughs> and a house mouse. <laughs> and physical damage caused by a house mouse. And there you can see a detail of the chewed area. You can actually see the little teeth marks. Physical damage caused by man. What do you suppose that man did or that person? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there it is. So instead of steaming the, them off, which is also an option, um, destroy them instead. Physical and environmental damage. I don't know if you can see on the, on the edges here, um, there's pin marks all around. So this was clearly somebody's very, very important photograph and they had it pinned up in their office and, and it fell and it got pinned again and it fell and the bottom broke off and they pinned it again. And <laughs> but it's also, um, the image is fading, uh, not that badly. This is from the 1904 fire in Peterborough, um, and it's mounted on an acidic backing, and the image could be fading either from, from light or it could have something to do with the acidic backing. And this is a photo stuck to glass, and if any of you have ever experienced your precious photograph stuck to glass, a really, really simple method of not having this happen is to just put a little mat board around it so that there's an airspace between the glass and the photo. Cellulose nitrate and glass plate negative. Um, this is from the Roy Studio collection. This was part of the, the pile of junk that when we were first moving the collection from the Hunter Street location to the library, um, this stuff that was just not usable anymore ended up in a heap uh, over in a corner and of course I went through it and grabbed what I could and this is <laughs> one of several of the pieces that you're just going to see now. And so what um, Mr. Roy used to do was sandwich his cellulose nitrate negatives in the same envelope, in an acidic envelope with glass plate negatives, with proofs, um, and eventually the chemical reaction between the cellulose nitrate and the images on the nitrate and on the glass would produce a chemical reaction that would wipe off, just completely wipe away the image. I think then, do we have one of no. Of the image is completely gone? No? <laughs> I thought we did. Okay, this is a print.
that was inside one of those sleeves that, that had the cellulose nitrate and the glass and a print and a proof. And this is a print from one of those envelopes. And about 10 years ago, it was almost a full print with a few loose pieces. And 10 years later, it's just a little pile of scraps. Oh, there it is. Cellulose nitrate deteriorating after 10 years. Um, and then just go to the next one. And that's, you can see the envelope, the Fleming envelope has been pulled down a bit, and this is, the inside of it has been pulled up. And um, so even after 10 years, the nitrate is still working, it's still off-gassing, it's nitrous, not noxious nitrous. <laughs> Glass plate negative stored with cellulose nitrate negative. Uh, the chemical reaction between the glass and the nitrate has completely dissolved the image. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> and cellulose nitrate, I'm sure most of you already know this, was the first plastic and uh, called French ivory. <coughs> Pardon? They made clocks out of it. They made the, the, the shoe lace pulley shoe, corn, everything, mirror, handles, lots and lots of stuff out of the French ivory. And that's how it deteriorates, kind of crystallizes and crumbles. After people decided that cellulose nitrate wasn't a really good idea, um, they developed what was called safety film, and it was on um, acetate, and so and that was called safety film. And cellulose acetate also decomposes. Um, and, okay, next one. <laughs> and when it decomposes, uh, it's called vinegar syndrome. And if you just go to the next one, that's what it looks like. Although you can still see the image. Can you see? No, it's okay. Um, you can still see the image and you can still copy the image, but if left unattended, one little, one little spot of cellulose um, acetate infiltration can destroy your whole collection. So if you have, and, the, and this isn't that old, these, these negatives are from the 50s, and if you have a lot of negatives from the 50s that you stored in cheap boxes or old metal drawers or something. If you open the drawer and you smell vinegar, then you have a problem. And you have to isolate that one negative and it could have, this is very deteriorated. This is almost extreme. Um, and what you might find is like one little pin dot. It just looks like a little pin prick. Um, or it could be like several in a row, like three or four in a row or a little, um, a little trail of them through the negative. And if you see anything like that, you must isolate that one and put it in cold storage. Otherwise, it'll destroy your whole collection. Self-adhesive photo albums. Yay, we all have those. <laughs> and my advice is always, if it's not doing anything, leave it alone. Like if it's not, if you're, if you're, uh, photographs are popping off if the adhesive is drying, then for sure take them off and put them into um, an appropriate uh, photo album. But if they're not doing anything and if the image is still intact and everything is good and you're keeping them in a, in a, in a good storage place, don't do anything with them because you'll do more damage trying to peel them off than, than you would just by leaving them. Older photo albums with photo corners, there's nothing wrong with these unless you can actively see something going on with them. Um, but if you have this, there are some folks that will say, oh, you have to get them into acid-free albums. Only if they're reacting. And the only thing that would probably happen is the little bit of adhesive on the corners might be reacting with humidity or high temperatures or fluctuating temperatures um, or if you've got ink uh, so something written over them in ink uh, to identify them then that ink could be destroying part of the image 
but otherwise, just leave them. <laughs> like this one uh, with an ink inscription. But it's not doing any harm, the ink isn't going anywhere, it's not causing any part of the image to be obliterated. So if you have these, don't worry about them. The transfer of image from an overpainted photo onto glass, and I do have this over on the table, and it's really, really interesting. <laughs> um, when this, uh, it, this was a framed painting. Um, and somebody brought in some um, crayon portraits that are that are on the side there, and it was the same kind of a deal. It was a photograph that was just lightly developed, and then it was overpainted. And everywhere where that this is a, a it's a portrait of a gentleman sitting in a suit, and everywhere where there was painting, where there was paint, was moldy but it was this beautiful white mold that covered the entire image. <laughs> mold can be beautiful, it's true. <laughs> um, this is uh, water damage and mold damage. We've all seen this. Here's some more mold damage that is obliterating the, uh, the images. Tide lines due to water damage. This is the tide line here. And that's where the water came to and stopped and dried. And then the, uh, the tide line and the ink transfer, you saw the, the little red um, circly things. Seal. <laughs> Seals, thank you, uh, on the previous page. And that's the ink transfer from those seals. Light damage. This is just a newspaper um, that was in my uh, bookshelf for about a year and the white part was tucked in between the books and the brown part on the left, on the right, the other left, <laughs> um, was just out in my living room. Not bright windows, not bright light, just household light and it only took about a year for it to become brown like that. A couple more years, if I had left it there for a few more years, it would have become darker and darker and eventually brittle and eventually would fall apart. Like this one. <laughs> this is um, a duplicate uh, certain document um, and it was, it, it's only, it's, it's young, it's only from 1974. And the fellow who owns this, I have it on loan, um, had it in his woodworking shop on a filing cabinet which lived under a window. And he was protecting it by having it sandwiched in between two pieces of glass. And so you can imagine when the light was coming in through the window every single day, every day, every day, it would burn this document. This document used to be white. When he bought it in 1974, it was white. And it's, it's on the side there as well. And that's just a detail of it. Acidic burn. This is um, a document that had lived just inside a regular old manila envelope. You can even see on the, on the right side there the, uh, the envelope. Um, flap. <laughs> An acidic photo folder. And this foxing is due to, uh, to the acidic environment that it was, that it was stored in. Um, this, this is just a, a, a very fine sheet of tissue in between what was the photo and the acidic folder. And it was meant to protect the photo, um, which it did to a degree, but because of the degree of acid in the, brown, in the, in the paper, it left an image like this. That's, that's not the photo, that's the acid transfer onto the back of the folder from the acid in the folder. Acid transfer from wooden backing on the right 
to the paper on the left. And I have that on the side there as well. And this happens with a lot, a lot of really old um, uh, framed pieces that have the wooden backings that, because everybody did that back in the turn of the last century, that's, that's what you did. You backed it with wood, usually cedar. And very often, when you go back to those or when you look at them carefully, the image, you'll see brown lines running through the image. That's the acid from the wood entering onto the image, onto the print. This is a beaded boot with acidic paper pattern and it's completely destroyed the silk. Underneath the silk here is um, a paper pattern. That's, that's how they were produced and the pattern held the design that the person was going to bead. And uh, because of the acid in the paper, it's completely destroyed the silk covering that was holding the beads together. And foxing throughout this acidic matter. <coughs> foxing is, if you haven't seen foxing, look in any old book or any old document and it's those brown spots. And those are acidic blooms there. The acid in the paper is rising to the surface and it's just popping out and it's called acid bloom. Self-adhesive tape used for repairs. We all do it, right? Little quick repair. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes, <laughs> the, uh, the chemical reaction between the paper and whatever environment it's living in and the adhesive on the carrier ends up destroying all the fibers, which is this one um, and this one. That's, that's daylight. I'm holding it up to a window and where the tape carrier is, there's no more paper fiber left. It's just the printed words and the tape carrier. This is a newspaper article which had been attempted, or somebody attempted to repair it using uh, tape and adhesives. And it's over there as well, what's left of it. Um, and this is the back of it. This is how they, this is the front of it, but the next one is the back. So they've used all kinds of household papers and envelopes and things. Clearly this was a really important document at some time. <laughs> and this is what can happen if you um, remove the, the tape from a document. Oftentimes, most times, some of the ink, some of the print will end up on the tape carrier. Even if it just pops off, sometimes even if it just pops off, if the adhesive dries underneath and it just pops off, it'll likely still hold a, a, a shadow of the word, so you, you, you lose ink most, I think always, just about. And a common scrapbook of back in the day, and adhesive residue. Um, oh. <laughs> Okay, we'll just move on. <laughs> this is the old uh, animal glue kind of adhesive, which is, um, if this was a really important scrapbook with, with absolutely, you know, your entire family history, then this could be taken, these, these documents, these little uh, bits of newspaper could be taken off um, with care and time because this adhesive is water soluble. So you likely wouldn't use it, lose any of the information, uh, but it would just be a very tedious task. And corrosion damage. See the pit up in the corner there? We all, I think every one of us has at some point put t papers together with a pin. Um, and the next slide will show you a detail of what that pin does. This pin now is so um, trapped in that paper with the corrosion that, that I haven't tried to take it out and it's on the side table as well. Um, but I think probably the corrosion would, would be intense enough that the pin would break. 
I don't think there's much of the pin left. <laughs> I don't think the paper would break as, as quickly as the pin would break. Paperclip damage. <laughs> and I have this bag of rusty uh, paper clips on the side there as well. And some very unusual paper clips. So you feel free to take a look at it. Um, all bad, bad paper clips. Back, back. <laughs> oh, okay, next one. There. Good paper, paper clip and bad paper clip. A lot of people use the one on the right, and um, even if it's white, and and think that they're doing a good thing, and uh, you are, it's better than metal, but these plastic coated paper clips are not sealed at the ends with plastic. They're open to air and moisture and corrosion will get in there and eventually it will seep out through, through those openings and onto your documents. They also leave color, by the way. They're not color fast. This is a charcoal drawing on acidic paper sprayed with a fixative. And this was done in the early 1900s. And so I don't know what the fixative is. I don't trust fixatives. I know a lot of artists use them now, but maybe 100 years from now, their piece will be as destroyed as this. Now this was just on newsprint, which is also acidic. Um, and the next slide will show you a little bit closer and then the next one, and that's what the damage is. That's actually the spots of um, fixative having a chemical reaction with the acid in the paper. Lamination. Do we all do this? Yes. <laughs> Any of us who have been school teachers in the 80s, we all laminated. All of us did. Um, and for the most part, lamination is safe unless it's poorly done and poorly stored, in which case um, it may end up looking like this. And the dark, the dark smeary bits, that's what's left of the paper fibers um, after a chemical reaction between the heat, the adhesives that are used in the lamination, and there's no air circulation. Uh, so whatever is in there, it's cooking and it's destroying the paper fibers. These photographs are from our m and in Peterborough, uh, from their map department, and they have many, many maps that are on the verge of total destruction, except for um, little bits of floating boundary lines and floating words. <coughs> like this one, there's just a few little smears left and the, the dark part on the bottom, that's paper and then just the few little smears, that's all that's left of the paper. Elastics used to secure documents. Um, elastics get very brittle uh, over time and they will stick to whatever document you're trying to hold together with them and very often they will also leave residue and stains and, uh, and possibly destroy your document. This is a plastic glove. These gloves are on the side. <laughs> and the deterioration is in progress. If you, if you try to take it out of the little baggie that it's in, it's very